Hi, I'm Tracy Lamori from Lamori Media, and I'm very excited to tell you that I am going to be on the online prosperity experience, and you can watch it, so join us. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, and today I've got you the high-profile international award-winning public publicist, um, Tracy. Tracy, how are you doing today? I'm very good. Thank you so much. How are you? Fantastic. Well, I'm really pleased with the show that we're going to be having today because Tracy is not only the founder and director of Lamori Media, but she's also a regular on the red carpet, something that a lot of people envy, but she does that actually for a living. She's also accredited by the iconic um, Cannes International Film Festival, and she's also a Universal Women's Network um, 2020 Woman of Inspiration uh, winner as a woman in media. Now, I could go on and on and talk about your accolades there, Tracy, but, you know, we brought you here for, uh, to the show so that you can explain to us all about PR and how you got yourself in this position. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself and why PR is very important to you. Um, well, to me personally, it started with messaging, and we, I think we're going to get into a little bit of that later. It was more, you know, from an activist perspective is where I got my chops, so to speak, and I learned how to deal with media and, uh, you know, how to, how to just talk to media, how to deal with media, how to get into media, and it was kind of hot button issues, which, you know, made everything else easy after that. But in terms of, you know, why it's important to most listeners, no matter what you do, it makes you the most valuable player in the room. So if you're in corporate, for example, and you're able to, you know, get into media, which is something that we can talk about how to do, talking about your expertise, no matter whether you're a butcher, baker, candlestick maker, the guy, you know, landscaper, no matter, contractor, no matter what it is that you do, there are media opportunities. And we're not talking about ads. We're not talking about things you can pay to get into. We're talking about opportunities for you to get quoted in the news and magazines and newspapers, um, which helps to build your build your brand, build your reputation for thought leadership, as they say, but generally elevate your profile. Um, in the words of one of my clients, make people take you more seriously. In her words, she said, uh, after six weeks of working together, you made You've changed my business and my life by making investors take us more seriously. Or maybe you're a creative and you're looking for film distributors. Maybe you're an author and you're just looking for readers. But whatever it is, being quoted in media as opposed to advertising and marketing. But, you know, public relations that, that you can't buy, that you can hire a publicist to find you those opportunities and pitch you to those opportunities. But you can't buy that positioning is hugely valuable, you know, especially on the world stage, we as there are a million opportunities now to advance beyond, you know, the, your neighbor who might be doing the same thing as you're doing. If you're strategic and willing to talk, not only do what you do, but to talk about what you do. Oh, absolutely! I mean, that that's the whole show right there in just one sentence. So that means everything that you touch and do is of utmost importance, especially if you want to be creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And we all understand that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. How, um, you know, how does media play in that whole sort of three words of know, like, and trust, especially like you said, a landscaping business? Yeah, well, 100%, you know, in the example, going back to the one client who said after six weeks of working together, you changed my business and I was and my life. And I was literally like, wow, like I get a lot of accolades. But, but honestly, what she was saying is you made investors take us more seriously or customer. It could be the same as the customers, make customers take you more seriously or potential customers. Or she even commented on how it made it when she said in my life, she said, you know, even people from her life, people she went to school with, or, you know, your aunt, whoever, oh, honey, all, you're doing really well. So that perception of success, because they see you being quoted in media, because of course, you know, why would they quote you if you weren't great at what you do? Why would they be giving you that credibility to quote you in Reader's Digest, in Good Housekeeping, in, you know, Fortune Magazine, and whatever, depending on what your business is. Um, and in terms of the landscaper, yeah, like I literally, it's funny because I use that up, 
example a lot, but I literally see you know, people are like, oh, you're just talking about a job. Da daily, almost opportunities for people in landscaping to get quoted in media, people in pest control, people in hospitality, pe or just also entrepreneurs, just general real estate, all these things I literally see. So I call that the opposite of a press release. There's the press release where you're writing a press release, reaching out to media to see who's going to pick it up. And then there's the other half of what a publicist does, which is monitoring all these different services, some that are hashtags, some that are free services, some that we pay hundreds of dollars a month for. All these different things where I spend several hours a day looking for opportunities for my clients. And that's where you literally see reporters say things like, you know, for Reader's Digest or for Fortune Magazine or for New York Weekly or with a deadline of Tuesday at two, I'm looking to speak to entrepreneurs who can speak to supply chain issues they've had this year or real estate agents who can talk about what color to paint your kitchen for a quick sale or to talk to like literally every, you know pest control experts who can talk about how to get earwigs out of your house or whatever like random things but if you are monitoring these things the way we do no matter what your business is it would open your mind to see wow there you know there are actually media opportunities for me so why do that Again, you know, and if you have a, a lot of time, you know, you could mine all these and figure out how to do a pitch and do it yourself. If you have more time than money or if you have a marketing budget, you know, forget your marketing budget just for one month and put it to PR. And, you know, I do work internationally. If anybody wants to try working with me, I'm happy to do a free consult. That's the advertorial part. <laughs> um, but the, you know, editorial part is, you know, regardless whether it's me or another publicist, after a month or two of working with a publicist, you would have a better understanding. Number one, you'd have the pitch. You'd see how they present you and where they present you. You would have a few, you know, already they would give you a good start on getting some of these media opportunities that you can put on your website that you can share. That it does, A, it acts like advertising does, you know, in the sense that it brings new people to your site. But B, it X times, a thousand times what advertising does because once you put that on your page, you know, your existing clients get excited and they share it. You're, you know, it just like magnifies thing. If you were putting together a pitch deck for investors, you know, think about it. I mean, I go and Google when I'm going to go do a hundred dollars worth of business. I go Google to see who I'm doing business with. Imagine if you're going to be putting down, you know, a million dollars or 500 million or whatever these investors do, you're going to go and Google and, and see what's, what's up with this company and this person. And, you know, if all that they have that you find when you Google is is their pitch deck, which, you know, we can all create with, an, you know, paying someone to do a nice pitch deck in pretty words and their social media, which we can all say nice things about ourselves in the socials. But there's nothing else. Are you going to feel comfortable giving your money to them or are you going to be more comfortable with the one where they they're up for an award and people in their industry are talking about them already? They're being called game changers. And, and that's why my client after the six weeks said I'd made a difference, because in that six weeks we had three or four news articles, a couple of interviews. She was up for an award in, in England when she wasn't even doing business there in England yet as a game changer in the industry. So when she was able to put all this stuff in her bio <laughs> and in the deck, and then they go and Google that, and then all of a sudden they find all this stuff. Well, obviously they're more interested in giving money now, or they're more interested in doing business with you if you're, you know, even if they're just trying to pick one real estate agent over the other or, you know, one consultant over the other. Then they go and Google the two consultants or the two agents. One of them is quoted globally and in the newspaper and all that. And the other one is just, you see his website. Who, who do you think automatically has more credibility? So that's the value of what I do. And I do that for, you know, literally anybody in the English speaking world, no matter what your expertise is, if you have, a, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an author, if you're a creative, if you're a filmmaker, anything where you have a message that you need the public to know about, that's what I do. Get fantastic, fantastic. And, and that really encompasses pretty much everybody else because if you wanna be successful in business, you must actually make sure that people know about your company. And obviously, like you're saying, it actually drives that growth for investors. It also puts you in places and multiplies, um, you know, your visibility. Because if people don't know you exist, you're obviously, um, they're not going to buy from you if they don't know. So it is really important for you to make sure that you've got your publicity boots um, about. Now, 
Tracy, how did you get started? You know, because obviously this is a big field. It's a big minefield. What actually prompted you to think, okay, this is my lane. I'm going to show up with red and black, come hell or high water. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a story. Okay, so that's going to take about five minutes is my most condensed way of putting it. So I never planned to be a publicist. It's not something that was, and you know, it's, I mean, now we're like, we all, we often were like, wow, but how are we here with the, VIP parties and the travel and all that stuff, as well as the hard work 18 hours a day and the strategizing and all that stuff that comes with it. But basically it all started. So my husband, Dave Parkinson and I, uh, we were in our twenties, we were 28. We actually, but before that he'd had a radio show just on college radio, CAUT in Toronto, but it was like, you know, citywide and it was, you know, covered a lot of issues. So we did things like anti-racism and social justice and all kinds of stuff like that. And that show ended just, you know, wasn't happening anymore we had to move on so three years after that we were just you know doing our sales jobs things just independent you know just working in sales entry-level sales and things like that and uh but still wanted to have kind of an activist voice and it was the early days of the internet and so we just decided to make you know a little netscape page where you just copied and pasted basically and we were just thinking about linking to other things so we were like searching you know just you know, police abuses, anti-racism things, corporate abuse, you know, whatever it was that we were going to be making links about. And then um, we found, I think it was my husband that first found um, the information online. It ended up being a little site that he had paid for. So somebody had given him a few dollars and desperately trying to get his word out. He, you know, paid for this thing on the internet because the prisoners have no access to the internet. But there was a man named Jimmy Dennis who was saying he was factually innocent on death row in Pennsylvania. And if you know about the American justice system, you may assume the truth, which was the black man. It's not always the case, but you know, with death row, it's quite often racially based, sadly. And uh, anyway, at first we were like, well, how when he was saying, I'm not looking for a pen pal, I'm not looking for a girlfriend, I'm not looking for, you know, what a friend, whatever, I need help. I just, this is the only way I can get message out, please help me. Um, and we're like, oh, my husband and I are like, well, how when is going this guy be? You know, and for some reason, and why do we choose to write? Well, I think it was because, you know, we had still, we saw that journalistic frame of mind because we'd had that radio show just a few years before and we were still activists. We were disturbed by this. And for some reason, you know, we put pen to paper. Okay, well, tell us about it. And he wrote back 28 pages, you know, on both sides, details, and then put, sent all the court documents that he had in the um, cell at the time. And we, without permission, we were new at it. And it's funny because we were like, what do you do then? You know, what do we do now? We're not lawyers. We certainly weren't publicists. We didn't know anything about what to do next. But what do you do with that? Do you just say, oh, well, that was a good read. You know, thanks. Thanks for thanks for spending that time. We had to do something, right? So my husband learned how to make an actual website and I learned how to write a press release. And so we figured if we put that up there, somebody else is going to be as disturbed as we are, but maybe a lawyer will come in. Maybe some somebody will help. Something will happen. And... So that you know, a couple of years later, lawyer, lawyers did come in, but basically that's how we learned to write our first press release. And I found it a few years ago, it wasn't bad. It was 1998 and that started what we call a campaign now, but at the time we were thinking of it in those terms and just activists work. And we were for 19 years working on Jimmy Dennis's campaign where he was calling us every week. And we were the only people until later on when the circumstances changed and he was able to get, you know, they, they had phone cards and then he had more freedom to call different people during the week as long as people talked, talked up his phone card. But before that, it was, you know, one 15 minute call a week and his family didn't have long distance. So he would call us and we'd be like, OK, go tell us. And every two minutes, every five minutes, you'd hear this call is coming from a maximum security correctional facility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, keep giving us that, you know, and and now I'm, you know, and I'm happy that I can say that he, he called me from a cell phone, not a cell, because he was freed in 2017 on evidence of factual innocence. And that was 19 years after we got involved, 25 plus years, you know, after he was first wrongly convicted. And now people can look this story up and, you know, in it's a long, long, fascinating story. Rolling Stone covered it. I'm in the article about, you know, my husband, Dave and I and her, uh, how Jimmy credits us with a lot of making things happen. But uh, so if you search Jimmy Dennis and Rolling Stone magazine, the whole story will come up how to survive death row. There's also, you know, if you search Jimmy Dennis and my name 
and my husband's name. There's a couple of articles that'll come up and interviews and stuff. But anyway, if you search Jimmy Dennison Rolling Stone magazine or Jimmy Dennison Now This Media, the story will come up. And it's a fascinating story. And, you know, probably we're going to see more of it in Hollywood and stuff as things move on. But uh, for now, like I say in the podcast, you know, for 19 years, if I had any media time at all, I would be begging people, please help us save his life. Please help us save his life. And now I can say, because he's an R&B singer now, instead of saying, please help us sing his, save his life, I can say, Jimmy Dennis, available on all streaming platforms. So it's a pleasure <laughs> to be able to say that. So I hope everybody will listen and support the dream that, you know, was stolen from him. He was a rising R&B star when he was wrongly convicted, when he was stolen away, as he says. And it's record breaking that, you know, this is the first time that we know that somebody's going back to that dream and making it happen. And so, yeah, so check that out. And that's an amazing, amazing story. But yeah, and to bring it back to how I wrote my first press release and how that became a business story is somewhere along those lines, you know, while he was still in prison, but because he's been out like five years now, but 10 years ago, I started my business. And it just occurred to me one day, because I was doing telesales and marketing until then, that, you know, that that press release thing, that skill that we learned that got us on media and got major news. And, and we were on like active television around the world and Dare Spiegel and People Magazine and even the National Enquirer and all kinds of stuff. And that media uh, savvy that, you know, even, you know, as an activist, when um, something would happen or I'd be involved with a political campaign, everybody would be doing this and that. And I'd be like, I'll write the press release. And they would all be like, you'll write the what now? And so I realized that people didn't have that ease with media that I had developed. So that's when I, I thought, oh, I can put my shingle out, you know, whether it's for creatives, filmmakers, authors, et cetera, or, you know, just entrepreneurs, which became a new passion over the last five years as I started to realize entrepreneurs are the same as creatives. You know, they're building their own dream. They're building their own little thing that other people are going to profit from as well. You know, they're going to have staff and you know what I mean? They're going to be building something people need. So, yeah. So now I see it as all the same thing and I'm privileged um, and successful enough. My definition of success is that I'm at the point where um, I don't have to take on, I never have, I never have taken on anything I didn't believe in, but definitely now I can say goodbye, I can say no to as many things as I say yes to, and, you know, that, uh, that's a, you know, I don't have to work with anything that I'm not, or anything or anyone that I'm not, like, super excited and supportive about, so, and I think that's the ethical way to go, because then I'm actually excited about everything I'm trying to sell, I'm not in marketing or sales, but I mean, sell as in the pitch, as in when I talk to media about my client or when I talk to potential investors or whatever, I'm actually, you know, enthusiastic. I'm actually their audience. I'm actually, you know, so that's the first thing you should ever look for when you have, or look for a publicist. First, you know, look for the redheaded, you know, me. But <laughs> again, but people say, what should I look for with the publicist, right? And number one, obviously a good track record, obviously professionalism, obviously all that. But also, are they, do they get you in your project? Are they excited about it? And do they get it? Because I always say, like, if someone tells me something and I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I could see that. And then I'm probably not the publicist for the job. You know, I should be like, oh, and usually that's the way it is. I've already got like five ideas and they're still talking. And I'm like, oh, oh, you know, oh, 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 I know where I'm going to send you. You know what I mean? Because I, when you get it, when you're enthusiastic about it, you are the audience. You understand the project. You understand what they're trying to do and where they're trying to go and, and all that stuff. Wow. Wow. Now, Tracy, obviously this is a human interest story that you took and also took an opportunity on saving a man's life because can you imagine he would have been stuck on death row and we would have lost like now you say um an accomplished rnb singer so obviously from what you've just said it looks like publicity actually introduces you to opportunities for collaboration and you got to be able to see these opportunities um you know and act upon them especially you know because the media always re rotates um you know every single day now while maybe you're not working with a uh, publicist or you're not working with somebody of your experience, how do you then spot these opportunities? Especially, let's just use that same example for uh, consistency's sake of a landscaper. You know, yeah. the, how do like, you find yeah. some opportunities? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so there are some, you know, like I said, some of those, you know, you don't have to go to the ones where we spend $200, $300 a month, you don't have to just look at some of the free opportunities. And even just to get your head around them before you start answering them, because 
Before you start answering, make sure you understand the difference between the editorial and the advertorial. For that example, editorial is me explaining to you what a publicist does and what a publicist is and what why you should have one. And then advertorial is me saying, ah, I'm the publicist you should call, right? Which I'll, I'll say a third time. But but see what I'm saying? That's the difference between editorial and advertorial. So make sure before you start reaching out to media that you understand that you're not there to you're not there to give you free advertising. They have ad departments and they'll be happy to send you to the ad department if you send them something advertorial. They're there. You, these are opportunities for you to be a source. So it's not going to be a big article about you. Some of them are. I mean, if you work with me, I'll get articles put out about you as well. But in these ones that you're going to be looking for, you would be like, maybe it's only a paragraph that you're quoted in, but it's, you know, in major media, like a major that you can say as seen in the New Yorker, as seen in, you know, whatever it is. So if everybody has a pen or ready to write this down, one thing that you check out is Harrow. H-A-R-O, help a reporter out. And that's similar to some of the pod match services there are that match up people with, you know, potential guests, pod, podcasts with potential guests. Only that's where you'll see, um, again, reporters from uh, usually it's heavy on the States, but from international too. And they're looking for quotes from literally that landscaper that, you know, you'll see a ton of things. And again, no matter what it is that you do, doctor, landscaper, baker, butcher, all the educator, you know, everything you'll if you look at that for a week or so you'll be like wow you'll be really amazed at the kind of media opportunities that you'll find there some other ones too one that's very heavy on uk and it's just a hashtag is hashtag go to twitter and it's hashtag journal request j-o-u-r-n-o request and if you go and look at that every day you'll see tons you know uk time they start coming in in the morning um and again you'll see a lot of things so the UK have even a lot of them I answer to, you know, they can be international stories. If they have, if they're only looking for UK, they'll tell you. Another one similar, which is heavy on Australia, but there's a lot of international stuff also free is a funny name called Source Bottle. Yeah. And then there's some paid ones like that, you know, that I've, that they were really good. Like, you know, sometimes you get the stuff on these before you get them on Harrow, like two days before. My favorite is Quoted. Q W O T E D. I pay two hundred bucks a month or something, but again, to do this right, you're going to be spending a lot of time. Like I've just named five or six of them, and I spend a couple hours of my day looking through all these. Few hours for sure. So if you're looking through all of these and you're only finding one or two things, and then you're not for sure how to pitch them, you know, then you're not maybe spending your time really well. But if you, like I said, if you have more time, if you're confident that you can write that pitch, that you can answer what they're asking. And then just put together a little paragraph about why you're the one to answer. You know, like Prosper is a, you know, speaks regularly to entrepreneurs across around the world. Blah, blah, blah. You know, so a little paragraph about why you're equipped to answer and then just, you know, answer them. And eventually, like you may, don't get discouraged. You might answer 10 and then on the 11th, you get one. But all of a sudden it's big, it's worth it. And those previous 10 weren't wasted. You can use those later for other pitches or for a blog and give you an idea about what people might be interested in. Maybe you can think of that and expand that to an article in your own, you know, local newspaper or something like that. Some answer that you gave Absolutely. for your expertise from media. Absolutely. Now, Tracy, obviously all of this is, um, you know, really fascinating, especially for people that have not been able uh, to maybe garner that, you know, free publicity themselves. You know, you mentioned all these places um, that are overseas, you know, like Harrow. We've got the one here in Australia, the Sauce Bottle. I was I was thirsty to, to interject and say, Sauce Bottle. Yeah, because we also use that one. And then the journal uh, request one, um, you know, in the UK, we'll be putting all those links uh, in the show notes there just so that people, you know, have uh, actionable, uh, you know, um, links that they can actually get started with their um you know publicity now from what i'm gathering here and from how i'm listening to you there's a lot of stories that you are putting together and you know making sense of this whole interview you know the first story that you talked about your client who was so excited that you changed their business and then you gave us the jimmy story and then also just about all the stories that are piecing together your career now how important is um you know the art of storytelling when you are faced with maybe uh an opportunity to present your story to the media um you know or have a publicity opportunity that might present itself 
Well, we always say, you know, everything stuck with, with a founder. And people are like, well, why would they want to hear from me? Like, this is even if you're just an entrepreneur with a small business. Well, there's always, you know, stories, even just in that, in your profile. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is the, you know, what brought you there? What were you doing before? What is it all? So quite often, you know, somebody will message me, you know, they'll start with PR and they're thinking along the lines of marketing and advertising because they've never done PR before. And they're presenting you stuff all about their product and all that. And you're like, yeah, great. I can try to get it on gift lists and, you know, media stuff and pitch the product. But only X percent of media, whatever it is, talks about a product. You know, the other 80 percent talks about people, talks about ideas, talks about stories, talks about who you are, and why you're doing. So one example is one of my clients. This is a great example. He's a, a hotelier in America called Vimal Patel. And he owns like, you know, eight or nine hotels in the um Louisiana region and you know he was already a comp you know hugely accomplished and everything whatever but we started working together at the beginning of January I think talking you know telling media locally and nationally about what he'd done which was you know some lawsuit he was doing acting for franchisees taking some of the big hotels to court you know on for the rights of franchisees and how they weren't being supported by the big corporations and blah blah, blah. also different stuff he also started a, a new software that you know does all this stuff for hotel use so there was a whole bunch of stories but but he had done but nobody knew about them so we started telling media telling media we started getting all these different media everything from podcasts you know to national article you know in washington quoted in washington post through harrow who helped report around he was quoted in washington post which ended up going to like 200 newspapers and syndicated literally all across america all across canada all, everywhere like search his name was everywhere well, about a month ago, he got a notification from, and I can't remember, don't quote me on the name of the organization, but it was some major hotelier, international hotelier organization and magazine. And they said he was chosen as, as one of the 100 most powerful people in American hospitality. And that is insane. Like you just made that face. Exactly. That's huge. Right. So now you can take that and put that in his bio, no matter what. And he was already doing that stuff, but it wasn't gathered in a story. We gathered it in a story and told it to the right people. till it started to be out there, started to be recognized. And then all of a sudden, whoever knew was doing that research, that's pretty strong. You know, the most powerful, even if it's the hundred, whatever, you know, most powerful people in U.S. hospitality yeah. or whatever your industry is. That's an accolade that you're going to, it's going to follow you for your entire career, whether you're writing a book in the future, whether you want speaking engagements, whether you want investors, whether you, you know, so stuff like that. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, any any list of um, you know of note is some list that if you're in your industry would increase your visibility because no matter what, people always want to do business with the best. There's no, they're not going to be searching through and trying to figure out if you know um, you know you 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 made the list. Well, exactly. I can tell you how much it's changed since I started taking some time over COVID to you know build my own brand, not just my clients because I had a moment here and there. You know, I was like, oh, okay, I'll do some interviews. So I ended up doing, you know, over 200 something, 250 probably now, podcasts, panels, speaking engagement, TV, radio, all talking about this kind of thing, talking about building your brand or confidence or, you know, whatever else. And so now what's the, what's the result? So now I don't, I spend a lot less time trying to convince people and tell them about my work and send them, you know, reviews of myself and all that. I don't have to do most of that now. It's like, yeah, yeah, just Google me. Thousands of things come up. They can listen for hours and days. And, you know, so they reach out to me after they've already done all their research. And they're like, yeah, I just want to hire you. By the time I hear from people, they're usually just, you know, okay, let's go. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and so like you said, they get to know you, right? So some people will, and people like to do business with people they know or like or trust. And I'll have someone reach out to me from a podcast I did like a year ago, some random podcast. They're like, you know, I heard you on whatever, loved what you had to say, and I knew I wanted to work with you. So even, you know, and I so I speak a lot to podcast, uh, sorry, to other publicists educated them on the power of podcasts too to really recognize podcasts not only as a separate media like television radio newspaper magazine podcasts like i see it like that but also separately from that they have especially for a business if you do anything business to business like i do huge advantage huge advantage because 
your listeners, people that are spending time to listen to a business podcast and spending time to listen to the episode you're on, like the people who are listening to for a whole half hour here to us talk about PR and public relations, they're really interested in that. It's not like it's just a random thing. If they're really interested in that, and if they have businesses, they're going to be thinking now about it. Huh, PR, huh? And some of them might think, well, you know, I like what she had to say. Let me give her a call. And even if only one out of, uh, do like five podcasts and only one or two people end up doing that, that's could, well, could be one or two really great big clients, right? Or even smaller, amazing clients. So um, it's really worth getting yourself out there. And, you know, and what I always say too, you spend a half an hour talking whether it's a big podcast or a small podcast, uh, um, then somebody else does all the work, says nice things about you, puts you up on their page, has all that nice SEO so that when your you know, name is searched, there you are. So that's, you know, really worth your time. Oh, absolutely. Like, if you take a moment to just acknowledge what we've just done, we've frozen this 30 minutes of time. Had you been in your office right now, this is time that would you would never remember but now we've created something and and these 30 minutes unless they delete the internet it's now etched in stone i'm not going to yeah. delete this episode <laughs> so for as long as i'm going to be running this business for as long as i'm also going to be looking to create for and relate to my audience this episode is going to be of value to them okay and like you said it doesn't necessarily mean we need large public houses or bigger audiences or things like that intimate audiences are the people that actually take the time because if somebody um is listening to a podcast like this for 30 minutes that means they are engaged and they're actually taking everything else um and they can actually act on it and that's the reason why we're creating this podcast um you know in in light of how it can help people create a business that's profitable and enjoyable now tracy you did mention something like people will be listening to this podcast and they're thinking how can i maybe turn my hair red or dress like the cool kids in black and red <laughs> what is the red best and red and black <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, I, I did make an effort today. Oh, yeah. All right. There we <laughs> That's go. the best I could do on short notice, Tracy. But how can people get a hold of you, Um, you know, just yeah, so that they can. Me. Yeah. Yeah. If you put my name down there, I'm the only one. It's a really rare name. So Tracy Lamori, you can find me on LinkedIn is a great place to connect. But you can find me on my website, lamorimedia.com. Facebook, uh, Instagram is Tracy Lamari PR Media. So all the socials, if you search for me, you'll find me. Um, and also uh, um, um, Lamari PR at gmail.com. And I have a couple phone numbers on the website too. I can give you if you want to throw the Beverly Hills number, which rings through to me here in Toronto. And I have, a, oh, I should be putting my, my new Malta number on my cards too, I just realized. I'm spending too much in the Mediterranean at the end of the year. So um, <laughs> working though, working, but working in the sun. So yeah, so people want to reach me, you know, I'm happy to do a free. And if they tell me that, you know, they, they heard me on here, I'm happy to do a free half hour consult where they can, I can really help them get their head around specifics, but what it would do for their specific business, what our first steps would be. And also I should say real briefly, and again, this is editorial, but it's important because people, you know, PR can be, you know, like marketing, it can be really off putting in terms of price. And I, I do so much speaking that I want people, entrepreneurs and everything to be able to access it. So I do have a whole bunch of different price ranges. I have from, you know, the entry level to what I call the executive level to the like gold star level. And even within those, there's different pricing because you can go monthly, you can go three months, six months, a year, blah, blah, blah. So basically what I'm saying is there's a whole bunch of price points that anybody in business will be able to access. So I'm able to do that just because of the, the experience that I have and the relationships that I have with media. So at different points, I know what I'm able to get you know, by putting this much time in and, you know, more so by getting more time in and more so by getting more time in. So, um, but, but I, I make sure that, you know, budget is, you know, I'd work really hard anyway to make sure that budget's not a barrier for people. So if you're thinking this sounds good, and again, if you spend any money on advertising, stop for just one month, I challenge you and take that advertising money and put it to me. You'll spend a lot less and you'll get a lot more for that. And then, you know, even if that's the only month you do, You'll be able to work off of that later and you'll have things you know uh, materials and stuff that you can you can you just use to build your business later whether it's by throwing it on your website or just you know 
messing your neighbors. <laughs> Absolutely. You see, the, the one thing about it all is um, I think we're both preaching to the choir here, uh, Tracy, because we did mention that your spending 30 minutes on this episode is now etched in stone and you can take it anywhere and it can be syndicated to so many other different platforms, Spotify, Apple, and, um, you know, Google Podcasts, um, you know, the, or any where people could be listening to this podcast. And this is your turn, if you're listening to this podcast right now, to subscribe to our channels, just so you don't miss out on, um, you know, interesting and fascinating, um, you know, topics like this. But at the end of the day, nobody takes their ads to, um, you know, their website to say, yeah, we're advertising on this website, we're advertising in the Wall Street Journal, but they take, like you said, even if somebody writes a little snippet, as long as their name is spelled correctly in that particular, exactly. in that particular it's website, it's people yeah. take clippings of that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you know, just so that we can maybe conclude our day to day, because publicity is everywhere, it's just about the biggest topic that anyone could venture into. And it takes a lot of time, money and effort, like you have mentioned, to get it right. Um, what would be the you know first sort of thing that maybe if somebody is probably hearing publicity for the first time on this podcast, where would you say that? will be the first thing that they want to do? Is it by creating their own story or do they have to just start, you know, reaching out with press releases? What so be the first thing you're going to want to do, I wouldn't even think about a press release first because that's more complicated because you've got to understand what is the story for the editor. So before you start to look at that, train yourself by going and looking at some of these requests on Hero and elsewhere. And then you'll start to see, oh yeah, geez, I never thought of that. Huh. Oh, maybe the news would be interested in me talking about that. And then you start to see, you know, the, what, because, you know, a press release can't be sale. We have a sale. It has to be something that's actually potentially news. They may or may not use it, but it has to be something that is potentially news for their audience, right? So, but start with a bio. So not a press release, but um, a pitch. So not, which is not just a bio, but, you know, think of it as sort of a bio with a little kick. So it's, you know, if I was doing your bio, I would ask you to or pitch for you, you know, you'd give me your bio and I'm sure it's really good. And, you know, I would probably just have to change a couple things, like add a few words, like Prosper makes a compelling guest, you know, makes a compelling segment on things like blah, 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 blah. Because of this, he's done so it's a, a couple of things, you know, that are media friendly, talking about how you're not only an expert at this, but you make a good segment on it and you're a good speaker and, you know, that kind of thing. So have that little paragraph that, and that would be what the, is the, you know, more about Tracy. So when I pitch myself to be on a podcast or a show or whatever else, I don't just send my bio usually because people are often like, well, great, you know, what do you want me to do with that? You know, but, but I'll send a thing saying Tracy often speaks about this, about that, about that. And then your bio. Oh, okay. So now they can see. So think about creating a couple of segments, or you don't have to create the whole segment, but a couple, you know, talking points that you could talk about. Things like what would you, if you were given a stage to talk about, what are some things that you might bring up about your business or whatever? Or if you were writing a book, what are some chapters you might think about? So just to think about some potential stories that media might be interested in. And again, you can get your ideas by going and looking at Harrow and all of those. But um, when you want to start answering them, all you really need is that is your you know the knowledge that you have, the ability to <clears throat> frame it in a you know way that answers our questions without going off on an advertising tangent, and then your little you know more about Prosper, more about Tracy, your little bio, and then they'll call you, they'll contact you if they want more, or sometimes they just use that. But that's you know the first thing I would do is start to go in and look at those especially the free services, the Herald, the source bottle, the hashtag journal request, and just start to, you know, see what's out there and then start to think about presenting yourself as the source to be answering some of them. Absolutely. And I really appreciate that remark because, you know, you, you can't just dive into a wrestling match with, you know, the, the biggest wrestler or boxer without having actually uh, trained a little bit yeah, and put your training wheels just so that you get it right. Now, we now enter the segment of um, this podcast, which is all about myth busting. Tracy, is good publicity, is bad publicity good publicity? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, there's people that I, people, entities, whatever, that I definitely will not deal with 
you know, because I've heard certain things about them and I'm all right. I mean, I guess some people will say, <clears throat> you know, some people might like it. I don't know. But no, you know, I think you need to, especially in today's world, <clears throat> be cognizant of the fact that people are going to judge you like they should, you know, based on your actions and your presence and your words and everything else. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be on the wrong side of that because the windows <clears throat> are pretty big now. Right. But I don't think it should be, you know, people shouldn't be behaving well because they're worried about being canceled or something. They should be behaving well because they're just behaving well. They're good people. They don't want to hurt other people. They don't want to, you know what I mean? They don't want to like throw their weight around and like attack other people and all that stuff. So people should just be behaving a little better on social media in general, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Tracy, I kind of thank you enough for, you know, the time that we've spent, um, you. you know, with, with you on the podcast here. And as you have noticed, if you're watching this show right now, the online prosperity experience, you will notice that Tracy has just been letting us know and debunking the whole mystery around public uh, relations and we've noticed that the main objective of publicity is to build awareness for your brand so that your company or your business actually stands for what you sell and the goal is obviously to increase visibility so your ideal customers would want to become buyers now wouldn't that be nice tracy i can't thank you enough for your time today um on on the online prosperity experience thank you fantastic Great.